Sure. So in the spirit of biomarkers, you know, for ADCs, a lot of what we're talking about so far seems to be uh, on the protein level uh, of some of the targets of the, the antibody drug conjugates. Uh, in our uh, poster, what we were looking at is uh, more conventionally what we're used to thinking about with respect to um, to uh, SDK11 and KEEP1 and SMARCA4 mutations is looking specifically at each of the genes being altered individually. Um, some of the earlier data looking at KEEP1 and SDK11 looked a little bit more on, at gene dosage and alterations on the chromosome level. It so happens that those three genes are all located on the same chromosome arm, 19P. Um, we really are thinking mostly about non-squamous cancers for those mutations, but what we found was that looking at the chromosome level and looking at low-level deletion, you're able to capture uh, groups of patients that are much larger than the 5 to 15 percent of, of patients with non-small cell who happen to have SDK11 or KEEP1 alterations, um, and it so happens that this larger fraction of the population seem to also have some of the same properties of low immune cell infiltration and uh, reduced responsiveness to immunotherapy. One of the other interesting things that we found was that um, chromosome 19P gain, which is not something that we're aware that others have looked at before, um, actually seems to predict for improved benefit from immunotherapy, particularly in squamous cancers. So that's very much something that we're not used to looking at. So um, I think overall this suggests that uh, looking at chromosome abnormalities and looking at gene dosage may be something that we need to do more across lung cancer to help parse out subpopulations who may or may not benefit from standard of care treatments like uh, checkpoint inhibitors, especially with this new wave of drugs that are coming through.